There we go. That's the that's where it really drops out, and you can go ahead and, and jump right in, Ryan. All right, so I'm Ryan Fagan. I'm a real estate broker. Uh, had I started the Artie Real Estate team. I have one agent under me right now, part of Berkshire Hathaway Fox and Roach, and then I got a whole another business of real estate investing, and I have a video production business too. So. Much yeah, that, that's um, that's how I met you. I met you through um, through FI Media. I right, right. Is, yeah. is, is the uh, the title right? And yes, you sir. were um, you're doing video, and social media marketing, things things along those lines. And we were we had a mutual client. We I have yep. to shout them out. We had a mutual client, Top Line S and P, based out of Cherry Hill. You guys are doing or might still be doing amazing videos for them, but. Yep. They are a, um, a micro scalp pigmentation company, right? So, like, if you're balding, they'll tattoo your head up and make you look like you got hair. Yeah, yeah, you need to check them out. <laughs> Those are awesome guys, and a lot of people yeah. don't know about SMP. That's why they needed us to uh, do video for them. And actually, you know, we're their only source of advertising, or like what you do with the with the ads on social media. But that's all they've been doing. Because when we first met them, they said they spent like five or 10 K on a radio ad and it did mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. And then they brought us in and they had you do the Facebook and everything. And yeah, we helped, yeah, we, we helped them with the Facebook ads. You guys did, you know, excellent, um, some excellent video work. And I feel like, um, I feel like looking at what you're doing now in terms of like your setup and, and your real estate, uh, a content game does like, do you feel like FI media helps you with, your content creation because you look sexy over there, man. Like <laughs> no homo, you look sexy in that setup, the lighting, Appreciate the video work. Is that, is that FI media? If you didn't do that, you wouldn't be able to do this, right? It's f the whole reason I started FI media was to, because I wanted to figure out how to market my real estate uh, business as a realtor. So mm -hmm. I was, I had no experience with video. I had no experience with any of that stuff. And I just said, you know what? The future is social media content, online content. No one's watching TV. It's like, how do you reach a customer anymore? You know, no one's watching a commercial. No one's listening to a radio. So, I was. So like, you started. So you were in. So you were in real estate first, and then you oh, yeah. were like, I need real to. Oh, okay. Real estate's my main thing, actually. I know. You see, it's okay. funny. We met through the video yeah. business, but. Yeah, uh, real estate is like my bread and butter, and what I do is like my main discipline. But I do believe you could do different things, and uh, the course. video. See, marketing. Every business needs marketing. So if you have a marketing company, it's going to put gasoline on anything that you do. Oh, hell yeah, man! You know I'm actually uh, backwards. I mean that's why I assumed because I I mean I got my real estate license in oh, Delaware. Nice. I, I had never practiced. I didn't. I never jumped all the way in. I took. I got the education. I got my license, and I, I'm just glad I did it because I learned a lot from it. And I actually got. I built a pretty good connections through through um, getting my license and meeting people through the class and whatnot, the real estate course. Right. But I I was like, I can become a real estate agent because I already know branding and marketing, and I know that I can easily market myself using you know the company i already have so Yo, like, i was secret, backwards man. look every yeah. business it don't matter how good you are it don't matter nothing about your product nothing if people don't know about it they ain't buying it and so yeah, when course. i started as an agent i was like you know i got my license i put it with the company and then the next day you wake up and you're like so uh what do i do and you gotta yeah. find people that want to buy and sell houses so how do you find them you gotta market so and and that applies for any business that you're going to start you know you got to reach people the biggest mistake people make is they think they're just going to open a business and people are going to come they ain't coming yeah. they're not yeah <laughs> it's not you build it they will come no you have to build it and, and put it out there and tell people and then they will come right but um no that's great actually this is another another mess up for me Every time I start this up these these pushy agenda podcasts, I always skip the first question, which is, "What the hell is your agenda?" That's, that has to be the first question always, and I gotta like remind myself, "What is your agenda?" That's the first question, Ryan. What is your agenda? Like, what? What? Why do you get up, man? Why don't you just stay in bed? Why? Do, what is your agenda? What do you What are you here for? Well, when you asked in in the prompt, I, I said ownership. That's what I, I want to help people. Um, at least own something, right? Not everybody is going to be entrepreneur. Not everybody is going to start a business or anything like that. Mm. That's unrealistic. But mm. 
I, I want to help the, like working people because I'm one of them to at least have a little something to have some individual power and power in America is finances and yep. I think when you own something of value you can leverage that and increase your wealth and having wealth allows you to control your own destiny if you are working at a job and you have to pay to take care of your wife and kids if that job tells you to do something it's a hard to say no yeah and i think you lose a lot of respect for yourself and you got to sell out yourself a little bit if you don't have things that you own to fall back on Interesting. So that's why i'm pushing for people man yeah no that's um, no i'm glad you mentioned that because i i think the same way like i know that everybody can't be an entrepreneur like, I know everybody's not going to own a business exactly. um, or, or you know, run a business, but I still push for ownership. So, like, first, like, my agenda is entrepreneurship, ownership, legacy, which I feel like legacy and wealth are similar, but it's more so, like, what are you leaving behind? And that's, that's to me, that's wealth, because if you die and, and nothing's left, then you had no wealth, right? I mean, and you have no legacy, essentially, you if you matter. leave nothing behind. Yeah, and you could probably leave behind a legacy of wealth that's not necessarily money. If I leave if I leave behind all these videos and all these podcasts and all these different uh, uh, books or whatever it is, knowledge, and if I can help somebody else, then at least I, and I, I didn't necessarily die. I, I'm still living. My legacy is still p being passed that's on. That's crazy thing, man, is like now social media, I was reading something like, you're, you're like a ghost now. Like if you pass away, <laughs> your content's still out there. Like my YouTube is still out there and the things yeah. that I said in believe in and talked about the more you put out there the more like your you know your kids your great grandkids they're gonna you know, see it everybody could see it so it, you know yeah. it's a crazy thing yeah so so yeah no, that's, that's what i'm saying like not, not everybody's gonna be an entrepreneur but they can own something you know they can create something they can leave something behind so you know you might you don't necessarily have to start that you know coffee shop or start that that ice cream shop but you know why not own a piece of property or even go in on uh, a coffee shop with a friend, right? Like, right. I still think everybody should be thinking of ways to invest and to own something, even if you're not going to be the head honcho running all the things and making all the decisions, at least pull 10K out of this retirement and and, let, and, be, and help somebody start something. That, so now you're like a part, a part owner. That's something we really got to talk about is like, how do we, I've, I've always been thinking this and I don't know how to apply it. Because I'm probably the worst person with this, but like, how do we like all work together on these things, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to get everyone with different ideas together yeah. to, you know, achieve anything like politics or businesses or anything. You know, everybody wants to do their own thing, and there, there's something to be said for individualism, but. You know, we, I don't know. We got to get together and, and start doing some stuff, you know, so. Yeah. I don't know the oh, answer, yeah. though. I, I, You know, I have a lot of conversations about this, and it's like, how do we get everybody mobilized under a couple of different simple banners that we all can agree on? Yeah. I, I think it needs to start in your community. Like, I think it has to start in your neighborhood, because that's where I get the most upset about is you live somewhere that you don't own. Like, you know, it's the whole town. So, like, you, you, you get a dollar, you know, you, you get money and you go out and you spend it with everybody else. And you're not you're not you're not necessarily helping other people in your community. Some people are some, some you know, but I believe you have to shop locally and, and locally. I feel like everybody could, you know, help each other. And and, you know, I, it's, it's if people were to think of that in that way, to come together in that way, it would be more beneficial. And I think it has to start at a local community level. I agree. And I think that's where ownership and, and real estate kind of comes in, because when you own, there's just something different about it. You know, you're an invested member of the community. Um, other yeah. people care, like if, if they're building something next door or something happens in the town, you feel um, more powerful or, or more invested than if you. Yeah, you feel you feel living. involved. Yeah, you, you feel involved. I'm in, um, you know, my, my office is in Wilmington, Delaware. And since since going to Delaware, I'm not from there. But since going to Delaware, going to Wilmington and being involved in a lot of um, 
you know, a lot of, you know, build, building a lot of things out there, uh, uh, helping build uh, the wind factory, uh, mm-hmm. uh, wealth, the wealth league out there. Um, I'm part of a, uh, the, the, Mill- the millennial summit, which is uh, a huge conference, uh, conferencing conference out there uh, in, on, on a waterfront. Um, there's a lot of things happening out there. And I feel like black people, especially and people that are from the hood and from underprivileged places right outside of where things are being built, they're not being involved. And yeah. they don't feel like they can be involved, and that bothers me because I'm there and I'm involved, and that's part of the reason why I do some things I do in terms of like just stop cutting my hair, wearing <laughs> wearing wearing black excellence, and just not, and, and just you know walking into meetings like that and, and not giving a crap because I want to show other people that people look we, like you sh- can do st- yeah are it, important exactly. Too. Yeah. It can be done. It can be done. It don't matter about anything besides your abilities. In reality. There is, you know, that that barrier that's there for people and it, it is harder, but it's not impossible. And if you if you build that, you know, build up your 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 piggy bank of knowledge and and education and skills, if you build that up, you know, you, you can make things happen if you if you think strategically. And, uh, you know, I think that's part that my ro- we all have different roles to play. And I always think for the black agenda, my role is, you know, the business side or economic side, right? Like, if mm-hmm. you have economic power, that is a primary power in the country. You know, you can start dictating things. Like, you know, Amazon comes in and says, look, we want a tax credit. We want this. Yeah. We want everything for free. We want all this stuff. And, this, and the towns, you know, or New York City or whatever, they, you know, accommodate that. But if, if I go in there and say, yo, I want to I want to do a, a community for, you know, disenfranchised people, they ain't going to give me nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and so you got to get to certain levels and, and have certain power. A lot of that power comes through money. So I'm trying to build it through real estate and, you know, not to take the conversation in a different direction, but real estate for most families is the only asset of value that they have. Yeah. And so, you know, just accidentally, that's your source of power. If you buy a house, yeah. you start developing wealth. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the worst thing is that I was just looking up the other day, the net worth of the average white American is $171,000. And the average black American has a net worth of 17000 So it's a 10x disparity. Now, we all know the reasons why redlining and, you know, basically black people weren't allowed to own anything of value until, what, the 90s, really. I mean, there's, there's bank discrimination even now. So, you know, I, I, I just push it real hard now because... I think it's probably one of the fastest tracks to, to developing wealth is real estate. Definitely. Definitely. I like one of the, one of the things that blew my mind, like the first day of real estate class was there's no more land being built. There, yeah. There's no more, there's no more land. So, you know, you have to owning a piece of it is, is, is definitely huge, especially in places where, you know, people are obviously there's land all over. There's land in freaking South America that has never been, been seen. But um, and land is power. I mean, it's funny. Yeah. You go back. So we live in a westernized culture, and that comes from like medieval times. And deeds and titles is actually from like, yeah, one thousand A.D. where you had deeds <laughs> and titles, where it used to be the Baron of uh, Westchester or whatever. Like, yeah. And and so titles actually the technology of titles hasn't advanced. Like if you look at a title, it's like old, old, old language. And yeah. that was the only power in Western civilization. If you didn't have land, you were a peasant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So that's like the fundamental building block of wealth. And I think that's an important factor. I don't think it's the only one. I'm not trying to be um, biased there because now we have technology and all this other stuff. But real estate and owning land is a core fundamental of power in the Western society. So, so you um, you just came up with a video just today, today, I believe, about tips for the first time home buyer. Yeah, and I was I meant to check that out, but I couldn't. I wasn't able to before we hopped on. But I'm curious if you could recap that. But I'm not, I figured you would have to have talked about the pandemic during that video. But if you didn't, 
think about that when giving those tips. Like, what should people be thinking about now in where the state of the market is right now? What should they be thinking about if they're thinking about investing now? I'm really glad you asked that. So, you know, I, look, no one has a crystal ball. No, one, This has never happened before, right? <laughs> yeah. um, I keep seeing, maybe I have too much empathy, but I'm seeing 30 million people unemployed. And I go, well, that's 30 million people that can't pay their bills. Unemployment hasn't kicked in for a lot of people. Um, that stimulus hasn't kicked in for a lot of people. What about these small businesses, the restaurants? There's a lot of people that are getting screwed right now, and maybe they're making it right now. But at some point, we got to see some damage from this, right? Right? Like, the stock market's going up. It doesn't make any sense. So my personal opinion, which goes against my own interest as, as a realtor, is that I, I got the market's got to at least slow down because it's been incredibly hot for the last at least since six years, seven years. I mean, so I, that's what I was going to ask was, is there like right now, does there, is it's not slowing down? Like it you're is in the not slowed down at all. I'm I'm in situations. <laughs> there's multiple offers still. Um, we're still having to like bid at listing price or above listing price. Wow. It's still a seller's market. Yeah. Like and today, like yesterday, this is happening. Yeah. Like literally, yeah. I mean, I've, all my deals have been so still competitive when I, when I'm working with buyers. Yeah. So cause people, and, people and, still are, I, mean, I think you're right. Nervous. I don't think the hurt. I don't think it's caught up yet. It's like, it's, I think well, we're real estate on always that. lags. So, you know, uh, you know, once all these buyers start buying the houses, maybe then the inventory balances out. The other thing that's happening is a lot of people are scared to show their homes. So they might show active, but you try to uh, look at them and they say no. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the inventory was already at historic lows and now it's even less. So yeah. maybe that's what's balancing it out, right? So there's less homes yeah. for sale and maybe there's a few less buyers which is a push in the market if you look at supply and demand. So mm -hmm. maybe that's what's happening. I can only hypothesize, but um, as far as like my investments, I actually closed on two deals um, during this whole situation and f my funding got pulled from the hard money lenders and I had to okay. scramble to find funding this is only for hard, hard money lenders. This like, is only hard money that. lending. This isn't so hard money lenders are commercial lenders. They don't have to follow the same rules like FHA or whatever. They're doing um, interest only loans, and you know it's very expensive financing, and it's only for investing. So it doesn't apply to um, you know the the single family buyer or just like if so you're you, so you have house. to essentially you have to be an LLC yes, to, right. to get that. So yeah. if you're if you're an investor, but. So I think the investor market is probably in a worse situation because okay. you used to be able to borrow 95% of the purchase price plus the rehab that it would cost to fix up a property if you're flipping. They cut that basically in half to 65%. So now you need mm. twice as much cash to, d to do a deal. And yeah. it's like 90% of the players doing the lending are gone. Like they're not lending money. So... It, it got real scary because I almost lost, mm -hmm. I probably almost lost like 20 grand during that time because I had deposits down and then I couldn't close and I had to scramble wow. to find uh, lending. So it was really so, tough. But, but you, were able, you were able to secure lending still. I was, but I, it, I'm still uh, a bit worried because uh, I was doing what's called a burr strategy. So you don't actually sell the house after you fix it up. You do a refinance on a 30-year. Um, and then you take the money out, and basically you get your money back that you put in, but you got to pay off the hard money lender. Okay. But I don't know if that exists anymore, so I don't know how. So you're hoping exit. that when you re when you refi, it's there's a difference, and you should be able to you can cash well, out. Well, I hope I could almost. even refi at all. Okay. It so how's that? So explain yeah. how that works. If if you if you refi. After you buy and right, so let me give you the, you rent, I'll give yeah. you the numbers here, right? Thanks. So, so we're we borrowed a hundred ten thousand dollars for this property, okay. and then we had to put like thirty thousand down. So we're in the property one hundred forty. Okay. The property is worth two hundred thousand dollars after it's done. Okay. You can borrow seventy five percent of that, so I should be able to get one hundred fifty thousand dollars when I only okay. between my loan and what I put in is one hundred forty total. But if I can't refinance, I have to pay that $110,000 back within six months. 
Okay. So I got to come up with 110 somewhere. So either I got to sell it or I got to refinance. So, so refinancing, since, I since to since you keep the raise the value of the home, yeah. if you raise the value of the home, you can re refinance at a higher value. Correct. They're going to appraise okay. it. It should appraise at 200000 You need to Boom. know your numbers, but yeah, that's the best thing I'm at. That's the best yeah. thing I'm good at is knowing the numbers. Word. So. But I don't that's know. If, I so don't know I've, if I can even refinance. That's the thing. I don't know if they're doing it. Yeah, that's that's something that I mean. I, I've I've heard of that strategy, and I never really exactly understood what it was. I just I've heard of that. It's um, like flipping a house, except for you keep the house. It's amazing. It's the best strategy yeah. ever. But because you keep the house, you get the rental income. But then you have a thirty-year mortgage. But as long as you do it right, you're going to make rental income still. Maybe like a hundred to four hundred dollars a month. And mm -hmm. you're gonna get, like in my my situation, I should make like ten thousand dollars off of that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're saying if you if you're refining at one fifty on the one, and I'm only in one forty. Yeah, I should yeah, get yeah. 10, I should make ten k and keep the property. I mean, it's it's an awesome strategy. So is this is this something that you, that and this is something that I I just feel like has to happen. Not that I've ever heard it, but it makes sense that. You if you ref if you get this loan for the rehab and you do the rehab yourself, isn't that damn near a profit too? If you're if you're doing a lot of the rehab all yourself, right. can't well, you? All right, so let's talk about doing the re. Okay, so I believe that this is a business, okay, and I want to scale it. I I am not buying myself a job because flipping a house is not really investing. Flipping a house is like. I'm glad you said that because that, that's actually time. what I want to get into is like my ideas in terms of how I want to start my investment strategies. I don't want to flip at all. I mean, no, if, if, if if the market makes sense, I might like sell, but I just want to buy. I want more doors yep, and that's all. Same. And that's what I want. I want a monopoly. I want my, a bunch of hotels and, and yep, apartments and, same, and same. doors and I want rent. My goal is to be on a beach somewhere collecting rent. So yeah. I'm with you. The problem is you buy it. You buy a property and you rent it out. You can't buy another property for another year because where's your income? Like, how are you going to get yeah. the money to do it? So mm -hmm. our business strategy has been we do a couple flips. We generate capital. After okay. those flips, we buy a rental property. Cool. But then we still have the funds left over to do another flip. So we keep generating money so that we can buy Just whatever, properties. whatever makes sense. You know, uh, the goal is I don't want to do flips either because, I mean, the risk is up. I mean, contractors are crazy. They could be awesome one day, and then the next day they mm -hmm. lose their damn mind. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a risk. That's a risk in any business, though, right? That's a that's a risk in anything. Yeah, but I mean, I mean that uh, construction is a weird business because a lot of people in construction like end up there because you know there's no background checks. There's no like it's a rough business, right? Like. Yeah, most of the contractors I know are pretty rough. <laughs> Got DUIs, they can't drive. Like, oh, like for for to be able to do a flip efficiently, you can't hire like the highest end contractor. You yeah. got to get the you got to get the cheaper guys to be able to get the, the stuff done. So yeah, it's super risky. So yeah, yeah, I definitely want to do rental properties. What we're looking at now, um, we want to buy commercial properties that are like 10 units or more as far as rentals. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking in like Texas and warm weather states in the south. So yeah. Arizona, Texas, Florida, because yeah. that's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Yeah. So I like I follow Grant Cardone. I'm mm -hmm. sure you do as well. Right. And that's kind of where a lot of my just thoughts about investing had kind of came from in terms of real estate. And he just speaks so bluntly and. To the point, it just it makes no. It just makes the most sense that it's like, all right, the most the, now now my single strategy is more doors. Like, and I think if anybody just thinks in that and th thinks in that manner, you can, you know, you're 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 doing more than other people. I mean, you want to own, right? You don't want to constantly be renting from somebody. And even outside of that, I'm thinking about something he mentioned. He rents from himself. What if I, I buy, buy a property as a real estate investor and rent to yourself? Yeah, so I think that's an interesting argument because people say your your single family home is not an investment, and there takes a lot of nuance to understand that, right? Because it's really not right because you have to live somewhere, so mm -hmm. you're paying something to live. Yep. Uh, my advocacy for that is that not everyone wants to be a sophisticated investor, and if you own your own house, at least you have one asset that appreciates in value. Definitely. But 
if so, for example, I want to buy a condo in Wildwood, right? This is serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I okay. actually want to buy a Wildwood condo. I've been wanting to do it forever, mm-hmm. and but when I look at it, you know, I, I was like, oh, I can rent it out for part of the time, and it'll pay for itself, right? Yeah. But then when I use it. It's basically like I'm renting to myself because I lose the income that I would have gotten. So it's the same thing as if I rent it out full time, right, yeah. and made the same yeah. amount of money, and I just rent it somewhere else. Yeah. So it's a, it's a similar concept. So your single family home kind of isn't really an investment, but yeah. for the average person, it's good to have because that's like it accidental, like I was saying, an accidental way to build wealth. I definitely, you should own something. So no, I'm glad you're saying that because I don't, I, you know, it, it's not, a, it's not for everybody. I'm trying to think, I'm thinking next level in terms of that. I don't want to, you know, I just got married in, in November, and and me and my wife have been, I had to make sure we we're on the same page because I am definitely not looking for a white picket fence house <laughs> as a purchase. You know, right. like I'm not trying to just buy a house and just live there and just be like, oh, okay, I'm cool. At some point, maybe, but before we even get to that point, I'm just trying to think of. You know, I'm trying to think of of leveling up and bringing in income and bringing in revenue. Right. So I want to buy a property that I, that can turn into revenue. So right now, the, the the biggest thing I'm thinking about that I can't get off of right now is a mixed use commercial and residential that I can rent out commercially and live in residentially, um, or some kind of combination of that. Maybe just multiple re- commercial, residential, anything. But I just want multiple right. doors. I can live in one, and I can rent out other ones. Well, let That's me where talk I'm about th- how thinking. I got started, and and I think it's kind of along the same lines, right? The first of all, the best way to get started in investing, or even just making a a good uh, financial decision as far as real estate, is to buy a multifamily, or it could be mm-hmm. commercial. I mean, commercial is a little bit more complex as far as leasing out and stuff like that, but similar concept, right? You know, you buy a duplex, you know, first of all, the mortgage is going to be less than whatever the rent is in most markets. So you already Mm -hmm. have that benefit where it's a little bit cheaper Then you're renting out the other side. So they're paying most of the mortgage, maybe all of it, even if it's half. Now you're paying what? $400 a month, $800 a month. But the way I got started is I was in the military. I was in Fort Hood, Texas, and uh, I basically bought a four-unit property. Okay. And I lived in one unit, and I rented out all three. Awesome. I had a property management company because I knew I don't know real estate laws. I don't know none of that. Yeah. I'm just going to rent it out or, and have the company manage it and just send me a check. Yeah. The people that live there didn't even know I owned it. That's awesome. It's even better, probably, because they probably would have they probably would have fucked with you. If yeah, they yeah. This. You know, it, the funny thing is, like, I would hang out with them, and they'd be like, "Yo, this property management, they're, they're jerks. They charge me for the blinds, and God, they're so hard." Yeah, and hilarious. I was like, "Oh man, that sucks. I haven't had a problem." <laughs> of course. But that got me started, and actually, you know, that property I bought it for one hundred seventy six thousand with a VA loan, zero percent down. So mm-hmm. I literally. Bought the, I didn't know what I was doing, by the way. I just told them I yeah. wanted to buy a multifamily. I, the first property they showed me, I bought it. I did the numbers, though. I calculated what the rent was, and then I figured out what the mortgage was, and I was like, the rent's more than the mortgage. That seems like a good idea. <laughs> so yep. after, after that... Um, so, that so, that was like, so that's how it started. Like just, you just actually were buying a home for yourself, and that's you know you're an investor. Yeah, and and yeah. I, I got BAH, which the army pays you a certain amount to pay your rent, and then like I just banked all of it because I didn't have a mortgage payment basically because the three units paid for it. I mean, how do you be? How can you beat that? Now people are you like, can't. oh, you used a VA loan and you bought it for no money, but you could do FHA and that's three and a half percent down. That ain't nothing. Yeah, yeah. Kyle, Kyle Ingram on on Facebook says Ryan got the bread. Oh, uh, so you that's definitely the name, got the. That's the name of my podcast. It's funny because it's really not true. Like I, I tell people, <laughs> I never made more than fifty thousand dollars a year at a job. Okay. okay, okay. I've never made a lot of money. I've just made smart decisions, and I've been investing this whole time. Is my video froze? Yes. Dang. I hear you. I hear you. You sound good, but. You're looking up right now. You're looking at looking at looking at <laughs> you look scary. <laughs> what is my problem? Dang. Oh man. I don't know if I'm I can to... switch it. 
Can I? Am I able to hop right back in? Yeah, go go ahead, All man. Right, hold on, let me unfreeze myself. And 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 investing in properties. He's saying more more doors. That's the same thing I'm saying. We're Whoa, speaking the same language. Right. Here you all go. Right. See, this is when you try to be fancy with all this stuff because I'm using my Sony camera and also. Hey man, it's, that's what happens when you have all that technology. <laughs> it looks. You look good though. I, I think right. that you lost the mic probably, but you're. Um, I lost the mic. Still, yeah, you're you're on the. Oh oh. You're like all the, right, hold on one The webcam. Yes. There you Sorry. go. All right. Sorry There's a radio voice. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. So, speaking of like video quality and the quality of your content, like everybody tries to act like it doesn't matter. But when you're getting started, when people see the high quality stuff, they're like, you look serious. Yeah. You know, like Will yeah, Smith can take- have can do a cell phone video, but if I do it, they'd be like, ah, he's just some regular dude. <laughs> yeah. No, you're you're right. It's like the barrier to entry. I mean, they they can take you seriously because they know that you actually took some kind of time and thought before you just turned the camera on. Yeah. So no, that, that's that's real. But yeah, I'm trying to get myself. I'm, I'm actually using my uh, my cell phone as my it webcam right now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's all right, man. I'm I'm trying to upgrade like you though. I need some sound. I think my sound sounds like echoey in here because honestly, you don't sound bad I never, actually. Yeah, but I know you sound crisp because of those those panels that you have in your room. It's right? really it's this mic. This mic is okay. All right, amazing. I hear you. So, um, what what else were we think? Okay, so you so said the that families, yeah. you know, because actually, like you were talking about Grant Cardone, and this is where maybe putting community together matters. Is you know, there's some called a real estate syndication, and basically you can buy. So, you can get a loan. 75% loan to value, right? So if I have a quarter million dollars, I can buy a million dollar property. So okay. if we put our money together, we can create a syndication so that we can all invest in a large income producing property. Mm-hmm. And this is what I'm looking at doing um, probably 2021 now. I was planning on doing it at the end of the year, but um, if it, I don't, you know, I just want to put our money together and do some investing. Yeah. But you know what the part of the problem is? You know, I, I'll like investors get it. It's funny. The people with money, like I'm talking to a couple of people who probably got like a million dollars in the bank or more. They get it. I'm like, yo, it's 10%. Um, we'll exit in five years. You'll get your initial investment back, blah, blah, blah. They understand the language of money. If I tell a regular person that they're getting 10%, they'd be like, that's whack. They're like, when yeah. when can I flip? I'm like, yo. Yeah, they want they want to double. Works. I'm like, how are you going to double? Like, yeah. what are you talking about? It. So they're like, uh, I'll be like, so if you give me a thousand dollars, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars at the end of the year, and they laugh at that, and they're like, that's garbage. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's ten percent return. I, that's amazing. Like, if you if yeah. you went to a Wall Street investor, like, yo, I guarantee you ten percent return yeah. for five years. They will take that. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do you invest in the stock market as well? Yes. Uh, I've been investing in stocks since I was 18. Uh, so awesome. 2006. Oh, man. So Ryan Ryan does got the bread. No, I had That's like $200 when I started. I had Apple. That's what I'm saying. I bought started, Apple started back $60. Then. You, you bought Apple at what? $60. Man, and what are they like? And I had Best Buy. No, but here's the thing. I sold it at like 100 Lord, So I got you. You know. Yeah, I, at the time, I, I thought you. I was smart, but now I'm not so smart. You investing in Bitcoin? Um, I have a bunch of Bitcoin. Um, I almost have Ryan one whole got Bitcoin. got the bread. Look, this, <laughs> you know, this is the thing. Like, I don't make a lot of money, but I put little bits of money in all these different things, and mm-hmm. some of the money comes back, and, you know, that, yeah. that's how you do it. I, I, I invest in stock as my 401k because I don't have I, I don't have a 401k. I don't have a retirement fund. I'm a full time entrepreneur. Yo, fucking you know, retirement I, I'm just, fund. Yo. Sorry. Yeah, I this don't know that, if I well, curse, I mean, but. no, you fucking can, man. This <laughs> this is your agenda. You can do whatever the fuck you want, Ryan. This is All your right, episode. Cool. So, but um, 
Yeah, that's my train of thought. Well, all right. So you remember? Oh, stocks. Yeah, my four hundred one k. So yeah, I, I yeah definitely fuck four hundred one k's. But I don't have one. Like I work for myself. No, right. there's nobody matching my four hundred one k and giving right. me money. Exactly. So when I started realizing, like, man, I, I need to definitely try to set up for the future. I was like, and I wasn't saving in the bank. I was like, let me just put money in stock, and that was I treated that like my four hundred one k. Like, all right, I'm gonna just put money here. Money that I don't mind losing, but right. it can stay there, and hopefully, it's going to do way better than it would do in a bank. And, um, and that's I how I look at my people stock would just, market. Play. You know, put two hundred dollars in there and 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 start really learning and, and practicing, right? Because yeah. you'll get addicted to that. Like you'll you'll be like, oh shoot, my two hundred dollars is worth two fifty. Well, see, you got to have the right mentality because two hundred fifty dollars, I didn't work for it. Yeah. Other people worked, and I made two hundred fifty dollars while I was doing other stuff. Exactly. That is, yo, that's powerful. Making money. That's, part of, off that's of ownership. Not that's, that, that's, that's ownership. Because you have now the reason why you got that was because you own a tiny, tiny fraction of that company. Exactly. That's, and that's, I didn't back, have to work. Yeah. If you make money not having to actually physically do anything, you should value that above everything. I don't yep. I don't understand people, man, because it, like my YouTube channel it just got monetized. I actually talked to somebody about this. They were like, yo, are you making money? And I was like, actually, I am. I'm making $84 a month with my 1,300 subscribers. And they were like, that's it? And I was like, what are you talking about? That's $84 a month for, like, I make the content yeah. anyway. What are you talking yep. about? Nah. So, you know, that's, that's my big thing, man. Like, and I do stock video, I do stock photos. So I get a couple trickles there when I take pictures because I like yeah. photography on the side. All that stuff yeah. adds up because I'm not working when I'm getting paid. You have um, and another thing like, you know, back to, you know, how you start, you, you, well, you start on real estate, but you also have FI Media now doing video and social media and, and things along those lines. And you have real estate, you're a broker. You sell to, to to people, but you also have your own properties. Like you have multiple streams, is like what I'm getting at. Yep. There's multiple streams, and that's how you win. I mean, that's how you can can not stress because now if something messes up, if no if no clients come in for FI Media, at least I'm selling a house. If no yep. houses come in, at least no I'm clients. shooting some video. Yeah, is that, is that <laughs> actually that's the question I had? Is that, how's that doing right now? Is it like oh, less we're on people? pause? We're doing zero. Yeah, you know, yeah. because you're you're um that's a business. You're you're there in in their business with a camera. Yeah, and no if they're shooting videos right now, you know, so yeah, and and that's the thing that don't be beholden to something. You know, you need yep. to own. You need to have things that are generating money for you. Yeah, if you were if you were only focusing on that. Um, and, and not real estate as well, you know, then you wouldn't be oh, set I'd up be like crying. this. I'd be crying yeah. over right now. And and other people are probably looking at you like, man, Ryan is doing all, doing all these different things. He wants to be a social media guy. He wants to be a realtor. He wants to invest. Like, what do you, just pick a thing, Ryan. You know, and, and they don't even understand. That's why Ryan got the bread. I don't because he got bread. multiple streams. <laughs> You're Look, lying. I have enough bread where I could do whatever I want to do. Right. That's bro. That's bread. I feel the same way though, man. I'm, but I'm I, humble too. I'm driving a 2012 Volkswagen Jetta, like I ain't. A, I, I live in a two bedroom townhouse. That's the thing people mm -hmm. don't understand. I haven't bought like clothes in like a couple of years. Like I need to yep. upgrade my wardrobe. No, you're, I see what you're wearing. Check, what are you wearing? This is my already real estate. This is my brand. I know. Everything. No, I know exactly what it is. But it's, it's pointing out that I'm the same exact way, man. Like I don't. I swear I don't. I don't have money either. But I'm, I'm surviving, so I'm not broke. But I don't buy clothes. I don't have any. I don't buy anything for myself for the most part. I'm wearing my own stuff. I only wear my own stuff for the most part. And uh, right. but another thing, I actually want to ask about your logo. Like, show your shirt again. I love it. So I have to t have to ask about it, man, because the logo's dope. And if you watch, if it's, they have to follow you on Facebook, I mean on on YouTube, find Ryan uh, Ryan Fagan on YouTube. And your intros are dope. I love the logo. And then it's like a little drum yeah. African so beat. So Kyle Ingram made that for me. And um, that's my FI media partner. And he does music and everything. Okay. Um, you know, it's funny. My real estate investing LLC is called Spartan Real Estate. Okay. And a while ago, I was like. Spartan. Spartan. Listen, we're, like we're, we're getting Greeks. somewhere here. I, I'm about to. Exactly. Spartan. Yep. That's and not a Greek guy in your shirt, man. Well, so what happened was I was like, why are we so like, everything is a Western, mm. you know, symbol. And I was like, I don't know. It, it just don't. And it feel it, right. And, and, Yo, I knew, yeah, I knew it was a reason. I it knew it was a reason, right. Ryan. And I was like, yeah, we got to be like, how come all of our symbols are like that? Right. Like mm. 
so I was like, you know what? Let me preach, Ryan. Let me think about some, and I really put a lot of, th- and that's why the logo came out good because I really knew exactly what I wanted. Because before I was like, ah, whatever, you know, it don't matter. But it really means something to me. So this is actually a Zulu warrior. So, boom, Zulu land is is South Africa, and or not exact. It's like southeastern Africa, and they were one of the last African nations to like resist and they won some battles against the British uh, during colonization and they united a lot of Southeastern Africa. And I think that's a powerful message. And I just want to, you know, it's funny, Black Panther really had an impact on me because it was like, what if, because when I grew up, like African booty scratcher and like African was like a negative thing. Damn right. And so it's like, dude, why is it negative? Why is that culture looked down upon? And I'm like, we need to embrace that because that's the true identity. And I know, look, I'm half white. People will be looking at me like, yo, this dude's Pakistani. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was going to add that was, that was the next question. I was like, <laughs> what is your ancestral history? Like, so where do you, what I'm do, basically you? half Irish and um, I did the DNA test. I'm like, okay. Mali and Nigeria are the prom, primary okay. African uh, That's awesome. Countries. I'm scared. Yeah, I'm scared of them DNA tests. To be honest with you, bro. Like, yeah, they I'm not be tracking them. people or whatever. I I, I don't know. That. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't even know. But it's something about it like scares me a little bit. It's you legitimate. Know? Yeah. And then and then articles started coming out, and I was like, whoa! I wasn't even. I didn't read these articles first. I was already worried about this, and then now everybody's pointing it out. Yeah, I'm like, I don't okay. Blame but but it, you know, I, I you know I found it kind of helpful. Yeah. Um, because Cause I want to. Well, we that's the thing, no though. Like, identity, you, I want to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and the problem and it, the real sad thing is because I, I, I'm planning a trip to Ghana. Hopefully, Kyle Ingram, who's been commenting, oh, awesome. will come. That's and awesome. not just the trip for fun. Like I'm looking at like land. I'm looking at what what's it mm. look like to build. Ryan, you know, I know. Please, please talk to me because I am. I, 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 I'm not in Africa, in but I want to invest in Africa. Yeah. There's there's no reason not to and. I'm not thinking of, I'm not I'm not a one trick pony. I'm not thinking about let's just build in America. I want to build, yeah. period. And and however I need to do that, I need to do that. And that can be done anywhere, but there's opportunity in Africa and I'm hearing a lot about well, infinite investment opportunity. opportunities out there. Because yeah. like it's the wild west, you know, it's like starting over. Everything in America is all like you gotta be really good to break in. You know, Akon was talking about if you bring your skills to Africa, you know, you're going to do very well. And, yeah. I, you know, I really probably, I really believe that. So I think I really, I want to get my feet wet. I want to go out there. I want to go for like three weeks or something, talk yeah. to some real estate people, see what's up, like learn um, and see kind of where it goes. I know some people are doing like coffee farms because coffee grows mm-hmm. well out there. Um, <clears throat> the problem that Africa has for, and I'm not an expert, okay? So, but from my research, even when they build properties, they'll have the raw materials, but they have to send them to China to get them refined. Like, so if you want floor tiles, like they'll have the raw material to build it, but they don't have any factories or refineries to create the actual finished tile. So all their building stuff comes from China. Meanwhile, yeah. they got all the natural resources. So yeah. they need some infrastructure there. So, I, you know, I'm looking at opportunities you know, this is Stay way touch, down man. the line. I need, I need to, I need to know. I need, I, I want, I want to hack. So I'm not going to be able to get right. there, you know, anytime soon. If you are, I need you to be my ear to the streets, and, man, and let me know if there's anything I can get, I can hop in and, on. And this goes into like we got to trust each other to build together, right? Like you know, as an individual, it'd be hard to do something, but maybe as a collective, yep. as a community, we can, you know, do something significant. So. That's we're gonna figure it out, man, and and uh, we're gonna definitely figure out something because no matter what, we're moving forward. You're gonna continue to look for properties. I'm looking for properties, and then right. at some point, you're gonna why not buy in Africa? Like, what the hell, man? Seriously. Like, it's, it's it's stuff happening out there. Like, there's happening everywhere, and it's way cheaper. And you know, the growth potential is up there. They have the youngest population. Like, there's a whole bunch of demographics that really make sense um, as far as an investment side. Word. So that was I, I feel like we reached every covered everything I was thinking about. And I'm, I'm so glad I remember to ask about that logo because I knew there was there was something about that. I knew it wasn't just it looked cool. It was like, man, I know my brother did I'm that for a reason. Something. Yeah, I did. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm it's glad funny, you, I'm glad, of, I wasn't, I'm glad I wasn't you recognize wrong. that because like I feel like people don't say nothing, but I feel like they get it 
without they me have to anything. especially with the intro it's like do 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 oh it's like a damn chant it's and strong. it's like it's hype yeah. i love it i love it and it's uh they people gotta check it out they gotta check you out on, on youtube ryan fagan and uh i'll make sure underneath this i'll post your youtube video so you can find your channel and um and yeah any any on on the closing note what have we not? What have you not said yet that you think needs to be said, especially to like these first-time investors, people that are thinking about investing now for the first time? Yo, so it's important to do analysis and do your homework, and know your numbers. But at the end of the day, you gotta stop being scared, man. Like, you just gotta do it. You know, you're, there's no way to know everything. Like, I I was in Iraq for 15 months researching about real estate. When we did our first flip, we ran into all kinds of problems I didn't know nothing about. Yep. And on these new properties we're doing, I still run into issues I don't know about. There's no way to know unless you do it. I mean, there's no level of preparedness that you can have. You just got to do. Now, when you mm. do, analyze after you do it. Don't Boom. paralyze in the beginning. Rec like after you go do an after action report say what did we do wrong what could we do better because something's gonna something's it's it. not gonna go right you're gonna you're gonna no. do and you're gonna fail like point blank you're gonna do and you're gonna get <laughs> you're gonna get smacked in the face and reality is gonna be like what the fuck were you thinking yes and you're gonna be like oh okay and now you have to to not you have let to that go through that yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you're not going to know, you're not going to get that until you go through it. You're not going to learn what doesn't work until you do what doesn't work. Dude, and on, on top of that, and something I mentioned on my two two conversations ago with my man Jono, you, you try to learn from other people's mistakes too. You don't necessarily you don't necessarily have to fail and fail and fail and fail and fail. Try not to fail at the things you already know is wrong. Like read about somebody that's gone through what you're going about to do. Listen to stuff like this. We can. We're, you're already saying straight up things you should automatically, you know, first and foremost, do this, do that, check your homework. Don't fail at these things if we're already telling you to do these things because you already failed at it. Yeah. If you read a, 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 bi a biograph autobiography on, on Mark Zuckerberg, there's a bunch of stuff about what he failed with when he first started. You're seeing people fail at things all day. Don't make the same mistake. That, well, the, here's the thing, the man. People. Like, people be looking at all these famous people and then they see what they're saying now. And that's a problem. Like, their perspective, even for me, yeah. I am at, like, some mid-tier as far as investing, right? Like, I have some experience and I've done some things. And the, the things that I would say now might not even apply to someone starting out. You know, so, so don't listen to, like, yes, yeah, so pay attention to these people who have been winning, like Warren Buffett and all that. But the circumstances now are much different. So you yeah. got to blaze your own path a little bit. So don't be afraid to buck the system. And I see my yep. videos uh, froze, but <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, no, we're, we're closing yeah. out. Asher's about to go get a picture and, like, drop it in there. But we're just going to just wrap it up, man. <laughs> and just... <laughs> and, it's a bad rap. You know what? No, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get it real quick. I'm gonna drop it in there because I don't want to close out with you uh, looking. Look, you looking, looking crazy. <laughs> I'm looking crazy out here. That's all right. uh, I got everything recorded, so I'll send you uh, everything in post too. Boom, boom. So um, yeah, no. So this is Ryan from Ryan Got the Bread podcast. Ryan Fagan YouTube channel. Find him there. Any other place? Well, I tell me, tell me, where, where's your uh, RD Real Estate? Where do they find you there at? So we got rdrealestate.com. We have a YouTube channel. I haven't populated it yet. The best way to follow me is on YouTube, Ryan Fagan. And if you want to send me a Facebook friend request, it's Ryan Fagan. Instagram, Ryan underscore Fagan underscore real estate. Uh, you can follow me there, too. My Instagram is sorry right now. I got to get my, <laughs> my stuff up. Word, word. I try to drop your... your I've seen uh, that. Your, I don't know. It, 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 right. it, 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 it worked because it, your audio goes out. So uh, I got to do this. Uh, all right. I got to put you... Got, got, <laughs> got, the, got the weird face. <laughs> it's all good, man. But I appreciate really you, Ryan, for coming on. Yeah. Yeah, Thank man. You. Yeah. Good talking to you, bro. Be safe, man. Yep. You too. Appreciate it. All right. We're off. We're off the air. Cool. Dang. <laughs> you froze right at the end. My switch acted crazy. Nobody yeah. Does that after a while. Well, I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me. I'm I'm flattered. I always feel weird when uh, people hit me up. You know, yeah. No, I'm I'm just. I know. 
I know. I'm the same way. I, you know, but I'm trying to make shit happen. I'm trying to get semi-famous. So, well, it's know, funny. You had the same idea. I'm like, dude, I've been sitting around doing nothing. I like, why can't I just do a Zoom or whatever? Yep. Yep. So. Exactly, man. Appreciate it. So I'll send you the raw from Dropbox, and then however you want to. Yeah, do that'd be. You I do. definitely would love that, man. Now, it's gonna be hard. Add in the audio because you're we're talking, it's gonna be one track, as you know. Yeah, um, can I pull clips and then post them on YouTube, or what? Or how do you what are you doing? Yeah, no, All you right. can, you can honestly, you can do whatever you want. I'm okay. gonna, I mean, I, I don't, I don't mind anything if you want to use it just for your own stuff, that's fine. Um, I plan on, uh, especially if you can definitely give me the, if you can give me the audio today, yeah, tonight, right then over. I'm definitely gonna have the podcast uploaded by like tomorrow night. Cool. Um, so I won't. But, so I have yeah. the OBS running, so it'll be like my display capture. But you could just pull the audio right out of it, yeah, if you want. Yep, definitely. Appreciate you, man. Yep. Thanks, man. See. You. All right. I'll talk to you soon.